What if I told you one of the world's largest seas disappeared? Imagine a sea so vast that it stretched over 26,000 square miles. On one side, you see a sea teeming with life. On the other, a graveyard of rusted ships stranded in the desert. Today, the Aral Sea is largely a barren desert. It's almost entirely gone. Beneath these cracks lies the ghost of what was once a thriving sea. How did one of the largest lakes on Earth disappear in just a few decades? And most importantly, can we bring it back? What if I told you this disaster was man-made and could have been avoided? In the 1960s, this was called one of the greatest engineering feats of the century. Today, it's one of the worst environmental tragedies in human history. But how did an environmental paradise turn into one of the world's worst ecological disasters? Stay with us as we reveal how this devastation came to be. What happened here is a warning to the world. Today, it's an ocean of dust, but this used to be an ocean of life. The Aral Sea was once the fourth largest lake in the world, after the Caspian Sea, Lake Superior and Lake Victoria. It was an oasis of life, its waters supported countless species, and its shores were lined with thriving towns. But today, over 90% of the Aral Sea has vanished. What caused such catastrophic collapse? The answer lies in a tale of human greed and reckless exploitation. In the 1960s, Soviet planners diverted the rivers feeding the Aral Sea to irrigate cotton fields. They called it a triumph of engineering, but no one imagined the cost. Why did the Soviet Union decide to grow cotton, a crop that requires a large amount of water in the middle of a desert? This seems like rather foolish decision-making. The answer is a combination of geopolitical ambition and economic strategy. Here's why they made this risky choice. The Soviet Union wanted to reduce its dependence on imports, particularly for cotton, a key commodity for the textile industry. By establishing cotton production domestically, they aimed to boost their self-sufficiency and make the USSR a global leader in cotton production. Cotton was referred to as white gold because of its economic value, a cash crop that could generate immense revenue. Central Asia was identified as an ideal region for this venture because of its vast flat land, even though it was mostly desert. Believing that they could overcome the region's lack of water through massive irrigation projects, rivers like the Amu Darya and Sur Darya, which fed into the Aral Sea, were diverted for this purpose. In the Soviet mindset, conquering nature through engineering was a display of power and progress. Transforming the desert into a cotton-producing powerhouse was seen as a triumph of human ingenuity over natural constraints. It wasn't about sustainability, but rather about showcasing the might of Soviet planning and industrial strength. At the time, environmental concerns were secondary to production targets. The long-term effects of diverting rivers and draining water sources were either underestimated or ignored. The priority was immediate economic gains and fulfilling quotas. 
What followed was an environmental disaster on a colossal scale. As water levels dropped, fisheries collapsed and local economies were decimated. The exposed seabed became a source of toxic dust, causing health crises for millions. By the 1990s, the sea had split into several smaller lakes, and soon even those began to dry up. But why did the lake collapse. What are the main reasons the Aral Sea, once the fourth largest lake in the world, just vanished? Here's a breakdown of the key factors that caused this unprecedented environmental disaster. The two main rivers feeding the Aral Sea, Amu Darya and Sur Darya, were diverted in the 1960s to irrigate vast cotton fields and other crops in Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan. These rivers were the lifeblood of the Aral Sea, providing the inflow necessary to maintain its water levels. Cotton, a highly water-sensitive crop, required enormous amounts of irrigation which was achieved by building canals and reservoirs that drained the rivers before they could even reach the Aral Sea. The irrigation canals were poorly built, with inefficiencies leading to the loss of vast amounts of water through evaporation and seepage. It's estimated that up to a staggering 70% of the diverted water never reached the fields it was intended for. As more and more water was diverted each year, the flow into the Aral Sea dropped drastically, resulting in the sea shrinking and eventually splitting into smaller, isolated bodies of water. The aggressive push for cotton production prioritized quantity over sustainable water management. The central planners were focused on meeting crop quotas, rather than understanding the long-term consequences of depleting water sources. The extensive use of fertilizers and pesticides for cotton farming further degraded the soil quality and contaminated the water, exacerbating the environmental damage in the region. As the water volume of the Aral Sea decreased, its surface area shrank dramatically. This accelerated the process of evaporation, as shallower water heats up and evaporates more quickly in the hot desert climate. Over time, the sea's salinity increased exponentially, killing off the once thriving fish populations. The retreating sea exposed vast areas of the seabed, which became a source of toxic dust. Wind storms would carry salt, pesticides and industrial chemicals from the dried up seabed across Central Asia, causing respiratory illnesses, cancers and other health problems among local populations. The collapse of fisheries and the decline of the local economy forced many people to abandon their homes, turning once thriving communities into ghost towns. By the 1990s, the Aral Sea had shrunk to just a fraction of its original size. It split into two parts. The South Aral Sea continued to shrink, with some portions becoming completely dry by the early 21st century, driven by human mismanagement with an undeniable disregard for the long-term ecological consequences. But the real question isn't just how the sea vanished, it's whether it can ever come back. The overall Aral Sea collapse remains one of the most severe environmental catastrophes in modern history. What if we told you that science and technology might just hold the key to undo this destruction? Could the Aral Sea be brought back from the brink? Some rehabilitation efforts in the North Aral Sea have managed to restore part of the water levels and bring back small-scale fisheries. In recent years, hope has emerged in the form of ambitious restoration efforts. Let's explore some of these initiatives. Efforts to rehabilitate the Aral Sea are focused primarily on the North Aral Sea and involve a mix of engineering projects, environmental restoration and international cooperation. While the South Aral Sea remains largely abandoned, 
abandoned and continues to deteriorate, the northern part has seen some success. Here are the key ones. The Kok Aral Dam, built in 2005, is the most notable rehabilitation effort. It was built between the North and South Aral Seas and prevents water from flowing south. This allows the North Aral Sea to retain more water from the Sir Daria River. The water levels have now risen significantly in the North Aral Sea, and salinity levels have decreased enough to support fish populations again. Since the construction of the dam, fish stocks have returned, and some fishing industries have been revived. Kazakhstan has also invested in modernizing irrigation systems and reducing water loss from canals in an attempt to better manage the water supply. Improved infrastructure allows more water from the river to flow into the North Aral Sea, rather than being wasted in agricultural irrigation. To combat the toxic dust storms generated by the exposed seabed, drought-resistant vegetation native to Central Asia have been planted to stabilize the soil and prevent it from being carried by the wind. Organizations such as the World Bank, EU and UN have contributed funds and expertise to the Aral Sea Rehabilitation Projects, while the Central Asia Water Energy Consortium and other regional partnerships are working on sustainable water resource management. Initiated by the International Fund for Saving the Aral Sea, the Aral Sea Basin Program is a regional cooperation framework involving the countries of Central Asia to improve water management across the region, promoting sustainable agriculture and mitigating damage caused by mismanagement. There are ongoing discussions about applying desalination technologies and other advanced techniques to bring fresh water into the region. This is still in the early stages, but could play a role in reducing salinity and improving water in the future. The UNESCO Aral Sea project focuses on monitoring the environmental and health impacts of the sea's collapse. Scientists are studying the effects of climate change and the role technology can play in stabilizing and restoring parts of the sea. While these efforts have led to measurable success in the North Aral Sea, the South Aral Sea has largely been abandoned due to the extent of the damage. The full restoration of the entire Aral Sea remains unlikely in the foreseeable future, but localized successes offer hope for sustainable environmental management. However, with the right mix of engineering, technology and political will, there is potential for healing parts of this devastated ecosystem. What if we could take these efforts further? With emerging technologies in water management, large-scale reforestation and even geoengineering, experts believe that the Aral Sea might one day be fully restored. From using satellite data to predict water flows to developing advanced irrigation systems, the tools we need to reverse the damage are already in our hands. But will the world act in time? The story of the Aral Sea is a stark reminder of how how human actions can destroy ecosystems in a generation. But it's also a story of resilience. Can humanity learn from its past mistakes and bring life back to this vanishing sea? The fate of the Aral Sea is still being written and you can help save it. Share this video to spread awareness, leave your thoughts in the comments below and let's talk about how we can work together to heal our planet before it's too late.